Hi everyone, welcome here. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thank you for coming back and watching another video. So in today's video, I wanna give you 50, 50, five, zero, zero waste swaps and habits that I do in my everyday life. So the point of this video is to give you more of like a quick rapid fire list of a bunch of zero waste things that I do in my life to hopefully help spark some ideas of things that you can maybe adopt in your life or things that you maybe wanna do a little bit more research on. And a lot of these things I've delved into a little bit more deeply in previous videos. So I will link my entire zero waste playlist in the description box down below. And some of these things I have future videos planned to dive into a little bit more deeply. So definitely make sure to subscribe down below if you're interested in zero waste content. And with all that said, let's get started. So I've loosely bucketed the 50 things into four categories, kitchen, cleaning, bathroom, and then just miscellaneous things. 50 is a lot, so I'll try and keep them organized into those categories and then link some timestamps in the description box down below so you can skip ahead if you're only interested in one portion or another. So let's start in the kitchen. In lieu of a traditional sponge or dish brush, I use a wooden dish brush that has a replaceable head and plant-based bristles. And I use that with Dr. Bronner's Bar Soap in a bamboo soap holder. I also don't use a drying rack. I'll just lay a towel out on the counter, put the wet dishes onto the towel, and then dry them and put them away immediately. And there are a lot of alternatives to a plastic drying rack, but it's just one less thing that needs to be produced and consumed by us and one less thing taking up space on our countertops. When it comes to grocery shopping, I will primarily shop at the farmer's market and the bulk bins. I will go to the bulk bins in the grocery store first, get as many things crossed off the list as possible before going down any of the other aisles. And I will bring my own produce bags and containers to fill the bulk bins. And especially now in the current global pandemic conditions, not all grocery stores are allowing you to use your own produce bags, in which case I'll just forgo using a bag completely and put the items directly in my cart. One of my favorite things to buy in bulk is loose leaf tea. A lot of tea bags are actually not compostable and made with microplastics, so this is a good alternative. I've been really conscious lately of trying to reduce my food waste. One of the easiest ways to do that is to compost and just a simple backyard compost will help you recycle a lot of your food scraps into beautiful rich soil but in addition to that I've also started freezing a lot of produce in particular bananas and greens so if I feel like something is getting near to the end of its life in my refrigerator I'll just throw it in the freezer and it'll give it a much much longer shelf life and it gives me a lot more time to use it up in addition to that I also use a veggie bag which is an organic cotton bag that you get damp and then keep your veggies inside and it prolongs the life of your veggies I find sometimes two or three fold. So it's a really great way to reduce on overall food waste, especially with fresh produce. Anything that I do bring home from the grocery store that is not bulk or produce, I do try and have it be in a glass container or something that is recyclable infinitely. And in a lot of cases, I try and reuse a lot of the glass containers. Things like pickle jars and spaghetti sauce, things that can be reused to house other items, especially bulk items, I'll always try and reuse those. But I'll also try and reuse use plastic that comes into our life as well. So I do my best to not buy things in plastic, but there are some things that I do want to eat that only come in plastic. And in that case, I just do my best to reuse that plastic, give it a long life, make it useful for as long as I can before it ends up either in a landfill or being recycled. And I always make sure to store any leftovers in a glass food container to prolong the life of the leftovers as long as I can. To save on food packaging, I like to make a lot of my own condiments and sauces and plant milks and nut butters. Not only will this save on any packaging that this item would have come in if I bought it in the grocery store, but reduce on the carbon footprint that it would take to ship that item from the manufacturer to the actual store that you buy it from. I recently started filtering my tap water completely plastic free using a charcoal stick. So essentially you just take the charcoal stick, stick it in tap water for the recommended amount of time, which varies depending on how much water you're trying to filter, and you're done. And so far it has left me with delicious tasting water. I don't take many supplements, but the supplements I do take come in glass containers with aluminum caps. And for any trash that is generated from our household, so anything that can't be recycled in our community or composted will go into our trash can, in which case we use a compostable trash bag. And we've swapped out traditional paper towels just for cloth rags that we keep in an easily accessible place in the kitchen so we can quickly grab it for anything we might need a paper towel for. All right, moving on to cleaning. So I know a vacuum is not the most zero waste way to clean, but with a dog that sheds a lot, vacuuming is kind of 
our best options. So we do have a vacuum that is bagless and that does save on a little bit of waste. Everything we need to clean gets cleaned with a combination of two things. First is a DIY cleaner that has just water, vinegar, and lemon essential oil. And that combined with baking soda meets all of our cleaning needs for the entire house. And in addition to that, we have a mop, a duster, and a toilet bowl brush that are all made from various woods, including bamboo, for a more sustainable alternative to the traditional plastic cleaning tools. All right, we're pretty much halfway done. Stretch it out. Oh. I feel like 50 was maybe a lot. Moving on to the bathroom. So in the shower, I don't use anything that comes in a plastic bottle or container. I use a shampoo bar as well as a bar of soap. I don't currently use conditioner. My hair is short enough that I don't need conditioner, but in the case where it grows out and I do need conditioner, I'll also use a conditioner bar. To shave, I use a safety razor instead of a traditional plastic disposable razor. And as a moisturizer, I use only coconut oil that I buy in bulk. Instead of using a traditional lotion that may come in plastic or even moisturizers that might come in smaller sizes that I would need to consume more packaging for. For my hair, I just use a DIY hair gel that is flaxseed that's been boiled and strained. When I'm on my period, I use a menstrual cup in lieu of disposable tampons or pads, as well as Thinks Period Panties. I have the organic cotton kind. I just started using this, so more on those in the future. I don't wear a lot of makeup, but I do wear mascara every day, and the mascara I have is by Elite Cosmetics. They're a sustainable company, and their mascara comes in a bamboo container. For eyeliner, in lieu of one that comes in any sort of like plastic tube, I use one that can be sharpened and it has a metal cap, and the sharp I have is metal as well. I brush my teeth with a bamboo toothbrush that can be composted and I use toothpaste tablets that come in a glass jar with an aluminum lid. I use compostable dental floss that comes in a completely compostable package. And I know some zero wasters reuse the same piece of dental floss many times before composting it. I am not that zero waster. I use the piece of floss once and then throw it in the compost. For sunscreen, I use a reef safe mineral sunscreen that comes in an aluminum tin. I like that this sunscreen totally protects me from the sun, but it's also safe if I happen to like jump in a lake or an ocean or something, it's safe for the animals who live there as well. To clean my ears, I use bamboo cotton swabs that have an organic cotton tip. These can also be composted. I no longer buy single use tissues. If I need to blow my nose or use a tissue for something, I'll usually just use whatever rag is around the house. A lot of times I'll use the stack of rags in the kitchen that you saw that we use for paper towels. I'll also use that to do things like blow my nose. For toilet paper, we use a bamboo based toilet paper, which is a renewable and sustainable resource from a company called Who Gives a Crap. And in an effort to use even less toilet paper, we do use a bidet. We have an aftermarket bidet that attaches to our conventional toilet by a company called Tushy. When it comes to clothing, I think the best thing you can do beyond buying from ethical brands is to buy secondhand. And this doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy from a thrift shop. Like you don't need to go walk into your local thrift shop and dig through everything to find the treasures. I like shopping from companies like ThreadUp or Poshmark or Depop. So buying thrift these days doesn't mean you have to buy from a thrift store. I also like to wear my clothes multiple times before washing them. The more we wash our clothes, the more resources are involved in doing the laundry, but also the faster the clothes will break down. So depending on what I'm doing in the clothing and like how much activity and sweat is involved, I might wear the piece of clothing like four or five times before I actually think it's dirty enough to wash. And when I do wash, I don't use laundry detergent. I essentially just pour white vinegar into the wash and it does the trick. And I do always wash my clothes in cold water, which can help prolong the life of the clothes, but also is just a little less resource intensive. And we do opt for a laundry bag that is made of organic cotton that we can throw in the wash with everything else versus like a traditional plastic laundry basket that in most cases is not recyclable. The next thing I like to do is to use the sun as much as possible. I use the sun to dry things, to heat things up. You can even use the sun to lighten a stain if you do something like throw a little lemon juice on a stain and throw it out in the sun. It's amazing how much lighter the stain will get. So harnessing the power of the sun as much as possible. Low hanging fruit into a zero waste lifestyle, but I use a reusable water bottle. And the important part about that is that I will take 
take it with me anytime that I leave the house. And by developing that habit, I find that I'm never without water having to end up buying a plastic water bottle. And the second piece of that is I never leave my house without my bamboo utensils, especially in today's climate where most places are carry out only if you are gonna get food. I never wanna be without the utensils and then find myself in a situation where I have to use plastic. So next up is my Kindle. I read almost exclusively on a Kindle instead of having to buy physical books. And I know this is not for everyone. There's a lot of people who like physical books and in some cases I do too, but this does help save on some waste when it comes to producing and consuming books. Next up is the swap to paper tape. I just made the swap to paper tape in 2020 and I don't know what took me so long. It works just as well as traditional clear plastic tape with far less waste. And at the very end of the list, I guess we should end with poop, our compostable dog waste bags. So in most cases, I like to let my dog Gypsy just roam free and poop out in the desert washes, which are equivalent to the woods if you don't live in the desert, and then let mother nature take care of the waste. But that's not always possible. In some cases we're walking and she poops in someone's yard and I need to pick it up. And in that case, I think the best option is to just use a compostable waste bag. Whew. All right, we made it. Those are 50 zero waste swaps that I make in my everyday life. Again, my full zero waste playlist is linked in the description box down below and I go into detail on a lot of these items in previous videos and stay tuned for more zero waste content in upcoming videos, including a really fun initiative I have coming up in August, which is to collect every piece of trash that I consume and share it with you guys at the end of the month, just to bring some honesty and transparency to what an actual zero waste or low waste life looks like for me. So if you're interested in that or other zero waste, low waste, minimalism, healthy living content, make sure you subscribe down below. I put out new videos every Tuesday and I'll see you on the next one. Bye everyone. <laughs> toilet paper brush. Nope, not toilet paper brush. Oh, the sun's going down. Oh, I keep tripping over my words. Um, hmm. what is this even made of? I secretly love flossing my teeth. What am I saying? Oh, I think 50 things was too many. Getting tired. Ooh. Well, they look like Olympic rings like this. Let's start again. Do I have anything in my teeth? Please make sure you subscribe. <laughs>